Hello everybody, Bryce here on the driving range again with your second tip. I'd like to give you this tip on power and what causes distance in a golf shot or the power sources in a golf swing. There's two main power sources in a golf swing. The first main power source in a golf swing is the difference that your shoulders turn in relation to your hips. The more your shoulders turn in relation to your hips, that's the coil in the golf swing. As your shoulders turn and your hips stay back, that creates an X and the bigger the X, or the more your shoulders turn in relation to your hips, the more power you can generate in a golf swing. In 1995, a teacher by the name of Jim McLean, a very world-renowned teacher by the name of Jim McLean, did a study, and what he found was the longest hitter on the PGA Tour at the time, John Daly, had the biggest X factor, and the shortest hitter on the PGA Tour, Corey Pavin, had the smallest X factor. But the really interesting part of the study was every player between Corey Pavin and John Daly hit the ball a little bit further if they had a little bit bigger of an X factor. So as you can see, a nice big golf swing with no differential between the shoulders and the hips, this is a very weak swing. But somebody that turns their shoulders a lot and holds their hips back, that can be a very powerful swing. That can create a nice big X and be a very powerful swing. Now for those of you who aren't 18, 19, 20 anymore and don't have that flexibility, there's good news. That's not the only source of power in a golf swing. Another very big source of power in a golf swing is the amount of wrist hinge you create in your golf swing. If you take a golf swing and you don't hinge these wrists, it's a very weak golf swing. You have no lag and no stored power when it comes to delivering the club head to the ball. What you need to work on is creating as much wrist hinge as you can, but maintaining that hinge as you come down into the golf shot. If you throw the hinge away or scoop the ball or cast the club, you're going to lose all that power before you get to the golf ball. What you'll notice the best players do in the world is they create a lot of hinge and they hold on to it until the right moment down at impact. Those of you who are trying to throw the club head at the ball are losing a lot of power and probably hitting a lot of mishit shots. So, a good drill to work on to create this lag is called a hinge turn drill, where you hinge the golf club straight up like this, turn the golf, your shoulders back, puts it in a good position, and then try to deliver it to the ball. When you try to deliver that club head to the ball, try to de-loft the club face a little bit. Don't ever try to add loft to the club head, and you'll hold on and maintain that hinge a little longer. I hope this helps, and if you have any questions about it, come see myself, Dave, Scott, or any other professional staff here in Elmridge. We'd be happy to help you. Thanks, and have a great day.